Evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. My name is Frank Schiavone. I am Joan's husband. <laughs> I reside at 6978 Hamilton Middletown Road, Middletown, Ohio. I'm also a business owner in the city of Middletown. I own a residence in the middle, city of Middletown. I practice law in the city of Hamilton. I consider myself a regional citizen of Butler County. George M. Verity was born in 1865. He passed in 1942. Mr. Verity. Because of Mr. Verity, we have the American Rolling Mill Company, also known as Armco Steel, AK Steel. Mr. Verity said, it's printed right here, right there. The Armco spirit is a comprehensive vital force which finds expression in the practical application of policies. Build it on a platform of Christian principles in which selfish purpose has no place. Principles in which selfish purpose has no place. Mr. Barrett will sit here tonight. On one hand, you're being asked to change zoning and ignore what the purpose to which this land is going to be used. That is not appropriate for you to do. And it's not appropriate because you already know what it's going to be used for. A plan has been filed with the state. Markers have been placed on the property. Representatives of Suncoke and AK are here presenting their plans. It's been alleged that agreements have been entered, in, been entered into. Options have been sold to purchase the property. So to ignore those facts that are before this body would be arbitrary and capricious. And I would also add disingenuous. So you are not to be let off the hook. It's just a zoning change. The 12th District Court of Appeals, which sits across the street in March of 08, decided a zoning case. And they talked about arbitrary and capricious decisions. The standard of review in administrative appeals imposed upon a common pleas court varies distinctly from the standard of review imposed upon an appellate court. A common pleas court reviewing an administrative appeal weighs the evidence in the whole record and determines whether the administrative order is unconstitutional, illegal, arbitrary, or capricious. You cannot ignore the record before you. The Court of Appeals that sits in Middletown, Ohio, has stated that in the month of March of 08. <laughs> There is a difference between zoning and planning. And I think it's very, very important. Zoning and planning are not synonymous. This was written by the Supreme Court of Ohio in June of 1955, 53 years ago. Zoning and planning are not synonymous. Zoning is concerned chiefly with use and regulation of buildings and structures. Whereas planning is of broader scope and significance. It embraces the systematic and orderly development of a community 
with particular regard for streets, parks, industrial, and commercial undertakings, civic beauty, and other kindred matters properly included within police power. In the case of the city of Cleveland Heights, which was an Ohio appellate case decided in 1950, it was stated that zoning laws are passed in the interest of the public welfare and the benefit accrues not only to the municipality, but also to the abutting property owners. Several speakers tonight have said they do not envy your position. I do. I would love to be seated where you are. <laughs> you are leaders of this community. You have the responsibility of what the courts have dictated. To ignore the facts before you would be arbitrary and capricious. I do not believe to a person that any of you are arbitrary or capricious. <clears throat> Is the Coke plant located in this area right here the highest and best use of that real estate considering all the factors that you had to have to consider in voting that it would be a coke plant is the lowest and worst use of property once you build a coke plant it's over. It's over forever. The area owned by AK Steel is so polluted that they cannot sell it to Suncoke. I'm aware of that. I understand that. But the answer is not to then pollute another 150 acres for a total of 500. That's not the answer. The lowest and worst use of land is a coke plant. This is not just a Middletown issue. It is a regional issue. We've heard about the health issues. They're real. The health issues are real. There will be an additional 2,800 tons of pollution by Suncoke's own numbers put out each year by this Coke plant. How any representative can stand before you and expect you to believe after living your lives in this city that a Coke plant will not pollute is ludicrous. It will pollute 2,800 tons I think that's 2.8 million, if I've got my decimal point in the right way. Uh, 500, 000, or 500 million tons of, of coke are going to be produced. That's uh, billions of pounds of coke. We're, we're talking a tremendous facility. These photos that Joan discussed with you, are built where they are for a reason. The Suncoke Energy Indiana plant is two miles offshore in the middle of Lake Michigan. Haverhill, I was there. Several of us went. Several members of this body went. I, did, I had white gloves with me, but I was not close enough to use them. But what I did do as I visited our coke plant from the outside because couldn't arrange a tour to get inside. <laughs> so I went and I, I, I looked differently at AK. I looked at areas I had driven past for years. Just, just years. And I never really noticed the coal pile before. 
2,000 coal cars make up the coal pile. That is going to be right here. This is my house. <laughs> this is where Lori lives. It's where the Shapers live. The Cowmans are here. Great people. And we've got Garden Manor Nursing Home. Amanda School. What's missing? Don't see any kids. Don't see any residents. Don't see any houses. Let's not forget about Kroger. And what are all these little rectangles? Oh, those are houses. Those are people. Those are houses and people. Now, I, I rode down with Joan and we went and we looked because we wanted to be sure. We wanted to be sure we knew what we were talking about here because this is just so important. <coughs> so we saw the coal pile. Mr. Schoen, you may not want to venture too far from the mic. I wouldn't want to pick it. I have a feeling it's picking pick me up, sir. No. Thank you so much. Thank you. We saw the coal pile and we saw the coke. The end product. And it's right up to the fence. Because you see, you can see. Thank you, sir. All right. You can see that. <laughs> you can see the individual pieces of coke through the fence. I was not on our coke property, AK property. I was outside the fence and was able to take a picture of individual pieces of coke. That's how close it gets. It's as close as I am to you. I am as close as this coke pile is to you right now. Only this isn't real. Just like that map's not real. That doesn't show what's really going on. This is a quenching tower. I've learned all about quenching towers because in order to get to the coke and to get to those train cars that have got Coke Express on the side of them, Coke Express. Wow. Cool. 600 a ton. It's straight business to be in, the Coke business. It's a great business to be in. It's a business we need to be in in Middletown because Coke is going to be sold all over the world. There's an art to making this stuff. And Sun Coke knows how to make it. And they know how to do a good job at making it. They keep the pollution at a minimum, but they don't eliminate it. 2,800 tons per year. 2,800 tons. You start adding zeros, then you got millions of pounds. Well, when they quench it, my understanding from the Planning Commission meeting is they're, they're going to quench it the same way as they had for 50 years. There's a big smokestack and it's got baffles in it. And they dump 10,000 gallons of water. They tell me they can't pick you up on the microphone there. I, I find that incredible. Thank you. Okay. They're going to put 10,000, thank you though, sir, very much. They're going to put 10,000 gallons of water on this Coke and 5,000 gallons is going to go straight up into the air and depending on the direction the wind is blowing it's going to take the particulate matter that Kevin Bragg talked about and we're going to breathe it. We're going to breathe it. That's why the folks that work around this area wear respirators. Now, I heard tonight that respirators aren't even worn around the Coke batteries in the new facilities. But what about the quenching towers? It's still the same technology. They're going to depress the new Coke plant 30 feet. That would put the top of the quenching tower eye level with Garden Manor, Amanda School, and all these houses. Eye level. Out of sight, 
Out of mind? I don't think that's the way it's supposed to work. Now, I went to see what coke looked like and what a coke plant looked like. And I had my white gloves with me. And on Ottawa Street, You'll see here that there, this is a, a, an identical map, only it's bigger, showing the site. This is the existing coke plant. This is the gate off of Oxford State Road into that coke plant. This is Ottawa Street. This part of Ottawa Street now belongs to AK Steel because they had to buy those homes because benzene had leached into the homes, carbon monoxide had leached into the homes, and almost killed those people. Kevin Bragg represented those folks and got them justice. AK paid. AK, I just heard tonight, is paying a million and a half, two million dollars a year or over a certain period to the folks that live in this area. So I went there. And I took my white gloves with me. And I found a fire hydrant on Otto Street. And I took that white glove and I took about four good swipes on that fire hydrant. There you go. There's your white glove. See it? Graceful. But it's a fire hydrant. Right? The firemen wear gloves. Don't worry about it. It's a fire hydrant. So, my son was with me. Frank Jr. He said, Dad, there's a swing set in that yard. A small swing set. So we went over to the swing set. And I put a new white glove on and I just took my glove and I went across that swing set. <coughs> put my hand on the slide. I ran my hand down the slide. And that's what was on that swing set. Right there. And it's right by the quenching tower. Right where Lori is going to be living. <coughs> right where the Shapers live and I live and Cowmans live and all these people that I don't know. I wish I did because then I could use their names also. And these businesses over here? See, because <coughs> this stuff, whatever it is, and I'm not taking the glove out of this bag, is not as dark as this one. And, and you know why, don't you? Because part of this went on some poor little kid's hands when he was playing on his swing set. And then they went in his mouth, because that's what kids do. And you know what? That's not right. That's just not right. Went to a man to school. Man to school sits here. AK's Coke plant is here. Amanda School is way over here. Put a new white glove on. Not bad. Not bad. Pretty clean. But what do you think is going to happen? <coughs> if you zone this industrial and they put the monster here, what's going to happen to Amanda School? That's what the kids are going to be playing in at Amanda School. Right there. 
you know, this, this whole exercise belongs wherever city planners go to school. Cornell, wherever. And it's almost like they, you know, given a question. Devise the worst possible plan you could come up with to destroy a region. Not only the people, but the land and opportunities and small businesses. Well, this would be it. This would get you the A. Now, you know, maps are maps. And what do they tell you? Well, they give you lines. They, you know, they, they show you that a coke plant's out in the middle of a lake somewhere. But nothing like going there. The The whole purpose of this exercise for this body is to create space for a coke plant that AKK needs. And they do need that coke plant. That coke plant needs to be built in Bucktown. It needs to be built in Middletown. Or it needs to be built in Monroe. Or it needs to be built somewhere close. Makes sense. The closer the coke plant is to the blast furnace, the better it's going to be. All right. Now, let's assume you approve this. This circle, the middle circle, is ground zero. Mr. Snook, who comes with as much credibility as any expert I've heard talk about any of this, drew those circles. The circle that you see in the middle includes Amanda School, Garden Manor, Nursing Home, and of course, uh, five homes. That's a wipeout. Because that is Ottawa Street, Seneca, Navajo, Omaha, Mohawk, and Winnetta right down the middle. That's what's going to happen in here. But it goes farther than that. Because when you extend the circle, that just gets devastated and not wiped out. Now what's going to happen? Let, let's roll the clock forward. Because once you make your decision on this one, there's no going back. We can't take the top off. This is going to be forever. If you begin looking at what is around that area, you are going to see on Route 4, businesses. This is an alpaca farm. In case you don't know what an alpaca is, it's a source of the finest wool, I call it, in the world. They look like llamas, but alpaca hair is treasured. An alpaca sells for about $20,000 to $50,000. That will not exist if that coke plant is put on that site. Because nothing exists around coke plants anywhere in the world, even in China, where they're putting coke plants up as fast as they can, they're even starting to make rules because it's wiping them out. So we say goodbye to this farm, this alpaca farm. This is a, a, a workout club, Papa's Gym. <laughs> There's high school kids work out there. There's old people work out there. Twin Elms Burning Kennel. You may not be able to read it, but it says fresh eggs available. Not for long. Not for long. Bunkies. In case you don't know, Bunkies is a dog grooming facility. Employs 10 people. 10? No big deal, right? But you know what they are? 
They're all independent businesses. They're, they're all independent business people. They'll be gone. Come down Route 4 and you get to Todd Hunter Road and, and there's a big sign right there. Todd Glenn Reserve, Ashford Homes. From the 160s. I don't think so. <laughs> Better take away the one. <laughs> Better take away the one. Because they're going to go bankrupt. This is a little drive-in. Drive through at the corner of Lafayette and Route 4. We can't forget the circle. Pollution doesn't go straight up, straight down. This is inside the circle. Independent business person that runs this drive through. Here's an auto sales that shares the parking lot with these folks. Cliff Spence Service. Independent business people. And you know what? They're in Middletown. Not Monroe. This is regional. This isn't just Monroe. It's regional. Anybody want to talk about the moose? <laughs> because they're going to get nailed. Now I've heard, I don't know how many members, thousands of members at the moose. And you know what they do? They play cornhole out back. They play bocce. They're, it's a family center. It used to be the drive-in. But they improved it. They put thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in that facility. Lovely furniture. They're gone. When they have to start cleaning the furniture they're selling, they're gone. You heard the folks in Haverhill are getting devastated with pollution. It's not even a guess. We know what's happening in Haverhill. You've got an auto sales. Do you see a car dealership in any of these photos? Has Suncoke provided you with any type of economic analysis as to what this does to a community? The Orioles? Halsey Myers Lumber? They store their lumber outside. For how long are they going to put up with it? For how long will their insurance company pay claims? Not for long. They're going to move. How many people work at Halsey? 75? I don't know. Maybe more than that. Angles Corner. Have you really taken a look at Angles Corner lately? It has become incredible. Look at the corporate ownership at Angles Corner. Kroger. Build a beautiful store there. Gold Star Chili. McDonald's. CVS Pharmacy. These places are in, I, I think, a couple of them at least are in Middletown. I know there's a split somewhere, but you can't worry about where the border is. We can't do that. These are corporations that will close down. McDonald's employs 70 people. They're open 24-7, 365. Gold Star, I don't know, 25, 30, 40 people there. Kroger, probably 150 people work at Kroger. CVS Pharmacy, got to be at least 20. Got to be at least 20. You keep it tracked? We haven't gotten to the biggies yet. We can write them off. They're not going to stay in the environment that will be created by the fire-breathing dragon right here. <laughs> they won't stay. They won't. They'll leave. They'll leave the way Dillard's is going to leave. They're going to leave the way we've lost so many businesses because we need leadership. We need leadership. We need vision. 
we've got to know what we have and how it's happening. This didn't happen because it was forced by a master plan. This happened because of consumer demand, the marketplace. This is the United States of America. This is how businesses operate. Look what we've got at Angle's Corner. Dad's Restaurant. Dad's Restaurant. Wow. Independent restaurant owner. I love independent restaurant owners. I think they're great people. <laughs> oh, well. Got another drive through right here. Got a car wash. Now they may do good. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know you, you've got a check mark, afford, affordable mobility, power chairs, scooters, ramps and lifts, it's healthcare equipment. This is these are real businesses. And then you've got the Sunoco gas station. Even with all that's going on, it's where I go to get gas. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why, but you know, old habits are hard to break. So I went there today to pick up a newspaper. And there was a sign on the door. And the sign said, closed for business. We are out of business. I asked some questions. Found out, well, they're going to tear it down and build another one. It happens, we see it. But you know, they put people out of work. There were people there that were new to this country. And I liked them. They were great. They always smiled and they'd say good morning or they said good evening. And they're just good people, you know, working real hard, just making it happen. And Sunoco closed them down. Uh, disposable. It's all disposable. Yeah. You know, they say that the, the housing around these coke plants is undesirable. Undesirable. I don't know about this, this body, and I don't know about you folks, but I am not undesirable. My neighbors are not undesirable. Those people that reside at Garden Manor are not undesirable, and those kids that go to Amanda School are not undesirable, and all those people that live here, and we don't know their names, all these people right there, all around it, we don't even know their names, are not undesirable. What's undesirable is the dragon. <laughs> that's what's undesirable because that's what's going to take all this down Speedway brand new facility, Angles Corner we're still in Angles Corner we're still at Ground Zero Angles Corner there's a carpet store in Angles Corner rainbow carpet Midway Mini Mart Family Dollar can't beat it and then this is the intersection as you're coming from Trenton. I mean, it, it's developed. It's developed without any help from the government. No offense. But it's people taking it upon themselves to take the risk, to invest the money, to open the companies up, to open these businesses up and go for it. Sports Bowl. How many of us grew up going to the sports bowl? Great place for first date. Yeah. Or the drive-in across the street. Yeah. <laughs> There's memories. We've got a tax service. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Right there. There's the address. 2711 South Main. And then right up the street is a new development. Prospect Place, affordable housing. It's clean, it's nice. But you know what? Right over the tree line is where it's going to be. 
because these places are just right here. This is Angle's Corner, right here. You know, the wind blows this way, and what happens? Yeah, how much of that are they going to put up with before they finally say, out of business, we're out of here. You should be getting the point. Over and over. So what about these rules about the redundancy? Take a look. Too bad. Take a look. It's not redundant. If you're Adam Christo and you're trying to sell houses in an area that's going to be depressed, it's not redundant if you happen to be the developer of Maple View. It's not redundant. If you're this guy right here that owns a lawnmower repair service, because there won't be anybody around mowing lawns. There won't be. So he'll be out of business too. So this is an economic issue. It's not a redundant issue. It may be redundant if you don't want to hear it, but you got to hear it because this is a decision that's going to last forever. Cable auto sales, Dollar General. And what about Burns? They have, I don't know how many thousands of plants growing in these greenhouses on South Main. Does anyone even know that? It's there. Will it last with the 2,800 tons of pollution? No, it will not. They will leave. They will go away. It will be an empty greenhouse. The community center? gets affected. Douglas Park gets affected. The Woodlands, an independent senior community that's being developed on South Main Street, a child care center, and the armory are all within the circle. Ask these kids, these boys and girls who just got back from Iraq the second time, whether they think it's redundant or not. It's not redundant. This is Reed Center. Now we're on the other side. We're on Oxford State. Right by Amanda School. You got a, a store. You got a major marathon gas station right at the corner. You got the Reed Center. But you know, when you, when you look across the street from Reed Center, you've got a neighborhood of houses. They're all clean and really nice. But right behind it will be the Coke plant. That's where it'll be, right behind that neighborhood. There are eight churches inside the circle. Eight churches. Pick one. Eight. Starting on Route 4, going down through Amanda. They're all there. They're all there. South Main Street, Oxford State Road, Route 4. Now we start getting closer. That's the back of Amanda's school. That wasn't a planned picture. It was a mother and her daughter playing on the equipment. I didn't show her my glove. I didn't show her my glove. I wasn't there to ruin her day. Garden Man and Nursing Home. 400 employees. This view right here, if you're standing here, this is the corner of Garden Manor and the Cowman residence. And on the map, it would be that spot right there. Behind this row of trees will be the Coke plant, will be the railroad cars, will be the coal pile. That's how close it is. This is 200 feet wide. 200 feet. That's the backyard of Amanda's school. Behind that tree line is what you get right here. That's, that's the football field. This is the Coke plant. Amanda's school. Directly affected by it. Directly affected by it. This is a view the top picture is the present entrance to Martin Meadows. 
Martin Farm. Picture on the right would be looking toward Hamilton, to the south. Picture on the left looks toward Middletown. That's the infrastructure. That's the entrance. The proposed entrance to the Coke plant would occupy this lane and then approximately 200 feet of field that will be turned into a road and will run alongside the Schaefer home. Now, it's not about those three houses. But then again, no one else here is going to be living there. So I think I've got the right to talk about. This is the Schaefer home. Everything you see inside this split rail fence will be coke plant. This will be road. This will be road. This will be the road. And that will be coal pot. Right past the birdhouse. That's their backyard. The way it stands now. Whatever you see past the grass will be coke plant. Totally unfair. Totally unfair. To everyone. Not just those three houses, but to everyone in this circle. Now, house values. Have they gone down? Yes, they have gone down. I know they've gone down because I spent a lot of money to get an appraisal. Now, today's comments, you know, journal comments are fun. Uh, you know, I've been called names and, well, Frankie, why don't you sell your house? Well, you know what? Uh, uh, you know, be glad you can get 200000 for it. The only problem is I owe First, nine, first Financial Bank a half a million dollars on my mortgage. So my $600,000 house is now worth $200,000. Mr. Mayor, we got problems. Because now it's only worth $200,000. Durbin and Associates have got my appraisal. It broke my heart. The Shapers got their appraisal. It's $205,000. And we heard from Garden Manor, they've lost two-thirds of their value. So you can figure this entire area, all of them, everybody, whether it be a $40,000 home that's now going to be worth uh, eighteen, or whether it's a $600,000 home that's going to be worth $200,000, they're going to be trashed. All right, now, how do we fix it? You know, I, I don't really care for people that come up with problems without a way to fix it. Now, that's a view from my backyard. See that tree? That's where the coke plant ovens are going to be. <coughs> this is all coke plant. All right. How do we fix it? There's some choices. There's some choices. Uh, we, we, could, uh, we could build it in New Miami. I don't like that. I don't like that. I've got to quote a letter, and it's an important letter. It was written by Dorothy Bake of Bake Farm. I'm not going to read the whole letter, but I just want to read the last paragraph. Development of this land is inevitable and not the issue at hand. Controlled, restricted development, which could be considered as an inclusion into the surrounding communities and not as the end all destruction of such is imperative. I implore you, Mr. Shaboni, do not cease in your efforts to curtail this madness. It's not up to me to curtail the madness. It's up to you. It's your job as leaders to do this. Now, how do we do it? Do we build it in New Miami? No. Do we build it behind the AK fence? Probably not. I understand Suncoke's resistance to, uh, to taking on the liabilities of AK Steel. I, I truly do understand that. I, I, as a lawyer, I feel it can be handled, but for whatever reason, these corporations don't want to do that. So, I would propose this. Let's really, really do the right thing. Instead of putting all of these people into some kind of hell that they don't belong in, 
instead of reducing property values by millions of dollars, instead of creating animosity between communities, let's think about this. Let's think about these people right here. And I talked to some of these people right here. And I said, why don't you sell your house and get out of here? Sir, we can't sell our houses and get out of here. There's nobody going to buy our houses. I bought this house when I first got married because it was the only place I could afford to live. And you know what? Virtually all the people I talked to work at AK Steel. They're making good money. They could buy the houses that were 160000 or some of the empty houses that are in Middletown, everywhere. Stunco can negotiate with these people and buy that land. There's 63% more land here, right next to the blast furnace, than there is here on the Martin Farm. Do the humane thing. It is a disgrace to our city that we have people living in the proximity of this coke plant and breathing the air and dealing with what they have to deal with. Sunco can buy it. It's already leveled. The coke handling, the coal handling is already set up. They put the state-of-the-art ovens in and they're in business. And what have we done? We have saved these people from what's been going on for years. Suncoat gets their wish. They've got their own property. AK gets taken care of. They get all the coke they want. And it's right at their fence. There is no conveyor belt. There is no destruction of property. There's no loss in property values. There are no health issues. Garden Manor Nursing Home continues to function. And the kids that Amanda school can go to school just like we did. And play on their equipment and not worry about dying by the time they're 35. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the leaders of this community. I trust you. I trust you to do what's right. Mr. Verity has been watching me, and he's watching you. And he did say one more thing. He said, I know that all things considered, the USA, with all of its abuses of democracy, and of liberty itself, it is still the garden spot of the world where peace, cooperation, and constructive effort can and should prevail, always, and the cause of a higher Christian civilization advanced. George M. Verity. Is this an emergency? I think it is. It's an emergency. It's an absolute emergency. It's not a temporary issue. This decision is going to affect this region till the end of time. Discuss this issue with each other. Back each other up. 